security. Now, a little bit about graph and machine learning. So graphs, the role of graph in machine learning workflow is, um, it could be every place. Like it could be from uh, data processing part to data modeling, uh, result representation, feature selection. Um, so the process uh, using, like the process of machine learning using graph starts as the usual from the available data, graph model helps data management, creating a connected and well-organized source, uh, source of truth. Also graph provides a great visualization of data and it shows its complexity of the original data, its shapes and the connection between different data sources if you have. Uh, using graph modeling, you can, uh, you can convert your data through different uh, some graph representation. Uh, graph can help you uh, for feature selection. It's easy to query and merge data. Also, it's easy to find the relationship between uh, data, uh, finding and extracting list of variables and a specific training uh, makes simple by um, graph. I will talk a little bit more on uh, feature selection through graph in future slide. Uh, graph will help you on data filtering uh, because it's easy to navigate. It's easier to navigate through uh, graph uh, filtering of data using graph makes it easier. Um, it helps to enrich data um, with attribution and ages. Information of age can help you to enrich your data. It helps, it gives a specific formatting as well. So um, that's part of the data feature engineering and uh, data analysis. But in the modeling as well, you can use graph, uh, graph based algorithm. Uh, that it could be unsupervised, supervised, semi-supervised graph-based uh, algorithm to model your uh, data, generate your model, and then in the doesn't matter like if you use graph for your model or you use another not graph-based model, you still can represent your data, your results based on uh, graph. Uh, Again, because of uh, the way graph is uh, uh, because of the, the way graph is constructed, and then visualization of graph is uh, whiteboard ready. Uh, using graph visualization, you can uh, describe your model better for business and uh, for your other peers. So graph is very intuitive to understand. People tend to un tend to understand graphs a little bit easier than binary codes or any other shape you present your results. So if you present your result through graph visualization, uh, business would appreciate it a lot. And it's easier to uh, understand uh, your results. So, as I mentioned, extracting a machine learning feature from graph is one of the features that you can use graph in your machine learning model. So um, graph embedding is a very similar, uh, it's the same as word embedding algorithm. Uh, practically, we want to determine a vector representation for each entity, usually for nodes, uh, in our graph uh, as a vector. So uh, why we want to do that? It's mostly because most of the models, machine learning models, use vectors as their input, and uh, most of visualization techniques use uh, vector as input. is It's easier for traditional models to use vectors. Uh, the hard part is uh, mapping between uh, nodes to vector should be, it's a hard thing. So it should be a smart, you should find a smart solution to find 
similar nodes that are closer to each other or similarity, even like similarity need to be defined. There are famous uh, graph embedding techniques, node to vec, uh, converse nodes to vector, a struct to vec is uh, learning node representation from the structure of the graph. Deep work uh, is one of the newer technique that use online learning of social representation. That, that, uh, that is used in online learning of social representation. And something during uh, the search for this uh, workshop I come across, it's called Deep Feature Learning for Graphs or Deep GL. Uh, it's a recent technique for graph embedding. Um, looks very interesting, very promising, especially it's designed to keep memory usage low. Also returns the name of the features and it comes up with, uh, uh, it returns the name of the feature as well. It, it doesn't say feature one, feature two. It it's provides some sort of uh, description for features, which is again, it's very helpful to mm, describe your model. Uh, because um, for people who work with business, they they know that how it's important for business to understand what's going on in your model. Sometimes there is an audit uh, request on describing your model and um, anything that you can add information to those models would help. Um, I haven't used DeepGL before, but it's very promising. I'm going to look at it, and if we have time, I will. If I if I was successful, I can show you on a hands-on session on how it works. So, um, speaking of graphing models, graphing mod, uh, sorry, machine learning. Uh, graphing machine learning is usually used for note. Some of the common models is note classification. So you have some known nodes, some unknown nodes, and you use your um, model, you use machine learning to classify your nodes, or you use machine learning to classify, to predict ages between the models. So you would say, okay, if node one and two has any age between them or not. You use uh, age regression, especially in weighted models. Uh, you can uh, regret like inform, like, use regression to have estimation of ages information, and also you can classify ages. Um, another one of the most useful area of using graphs is anomaly detection. Generally, anomaly, although like everyone has, think they know what anomaly is, but there is no much well-defined uh, description of what anomaly is. Anomaly detection, uh, I would say, is a record point graph in a graph, maybe a node or edge, it would be anomalous if it's a rarity, likelihood, outlierness score, exceed the, the user-defined uh, threshold. So you have to define some sort of threshold, and if you see something that's above that threshold or like beyond that threshold, you would consider as anomalous. The uh, anomalous should be anomalous events should be rare, isolated, and surprising. So you wouldn't uh, guess that oh, it's a, like it's uh, something that it's not in the general representative of your uh, data. Um, graph anomaly, there you can use an graph anomaly detection in so many different ways. Um, in malware detection, in spam detection, uh, spam website, investment fraud, fake review, false advertisement, uh, insider trade, email spam. One of the most uh, famous techniques that use um, graph to detect anomaly is called trust rank is based on, uh, it's called trust rank and detects anomaly connection and detects spam uh, web pages. Uh, 
uh, trust rank is based on one of the Google's developed uh, technique, uh, page rank. That uh, Google developed that page rank to mm, sort the result of the search based on the most uh, popular one for your uh, uh, view for people like it's a personal for each person. And TrustRank uses similar uh, logic as uh, Google search engine to detect if some uh, websites are anomalous, they are spammed or not. Another technique that uh, you can use uh, graphs for is recommendation uh, system. So uh, I'm sure you all know recommendation system. For graph, like um, you can represent events as a graph, and also you can uh, compute nearest neighbors. Uh, in graph and those like compute the locality in graphs and generate recommendation system based on that. Recommendation system, uh, it, usually people use it in uh, some website like Netflix or Amazon, like some uh, advertisement website or cell website or uh, a streaming website. But in cybersecurity, we use a recommendation system to define our access controls. So in the webs, in the big companies with again hundred thousands of computers and uh, hundred thousands of uh, employees and ten thousands of employees, uh, not everybody are allowed to access to every computer or every system, and controlling this. Uh, systems sometimes might get very tricky actually always gets tricky because like there are so many noises and moves around here and people forget to revoke their accesses or generate like to request new access to use systems so controlling using recommendation system you can find uh, people anomalies accesses and control to see if someone access to the server that they are not allowed to or they, they shouldn't access to. <clears throat> so uh, graph neural networks is another concept um, that uh, recently are taking off. It's very useful uh, idea. It's um, Graph neural network use nodes uh, neighborhood uh, like uh, determine node uh, computation graphs and also uh, looks at the different uh, sorry let me recap on. graph neural networks is a model that captures the dependency of the graph we are uh, using messages passing between the nodes. It's very similar to neural networks, actual neural networks, but graph neural, just uh, graph neural networks uh, retains a stat that can represent information from the node's neighborhood. And then you have to define the depth of each neighborhood. Uh, also, another way of like determining is like uh, graph neural networks learns how to propagate information across the graph uh, to compute each node's feature. Uh, although I'm mentioning it here, but uh, we are not going to, um, I'm not really good at graph neural networks and uh, we are not going to have any hands-on experience here. There will be in near future another uh, workshop that specifically works on graph neural networks. Hopefully we, are, we all see all of you there and we all together learn about graph neural networks there. Um, but besides that, okay, like I, I went through what graph is, graphs in cybersecurity and uh, graphs in machine learning. So what we are going to learn, um, in the last session, in the last hands-on session, would be um, 
I'm going to show some practical usage of uh, graph uh, on detecting fraud in uh, mobile money transfers. Also, if we have time, I, we will work on uh, um, detecting uh, attacks uh, using uh, trust rank or another anomaly detection in techniques. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Hopefully, I will see you either in person or virtually on Thursday.